What really is the biggest risk to owning silver? The land of Arcadia. Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics. As we continue on getting into late October here in the gold and silver markets, a pleasure to be with you as always today. And since so much of our show is focused on the reasons to own silver, why I am such a big fan of silver, why I left my former trading job on Wall Street to write about silver, talk about silver, eventually do this show about silver. So we've covered a lot of the reasons why to buy, and I'm sure before this video is done, I'll mention one or two more. But today, I thought it might be useful to talk about what are really the risks. So what's the downside risk to owning silver? Um, obviously, there are risks to doing anything. And um, again, I hope this comes across clearly. My goal isn't to convince anyone to buy silver or do anything, but hopefully just to pass along good information that can help you make the best decisions for yourself because certainly that was what I found during my time on Wall Street and beyond where I don't know I suppose there's something something to be said if you have some great money manager that just always makes you a ton of money and you just hand things over completely to that guy then I mean I guess if you find that then sure go for it but to me, in my own life, it always just felt like such a big step in my investing career was really going out, learning what I thought was important, leaving behind what Wall Street thought was important, and um, you know, taking ownership of that process myself. So that's what I try and pass along, not what you should do, because obviously I'm talking to a lot of different people, but rather just some of the things that you don't see out there and hopefully provide that information so that you can make the best decisions, whatever is right for you. So anyway, with that said, let's hop in. And when you think about it, what really is the biggest risk to owning silver? And I mean, to me, it's a little bit different than just about any other asset class I've ever looked at or thought about or covered because in terms of the long-term fundamentals, I don't know if there's anything else where, at least in my opinion, there's only one outcome possible. And we'll dig into why that is the case. But I mean, it, uh, at the heart of it is that the Fed can't raise interest rates. They can talk about them like they've been doing for the last 12 years. But at the end of the day, when you understand what happens when you lower interest rates and why the more that you keep interest rates low, the harder it is for them to be raised. I mean, you, you can raise them, but then it's just in the same way that printing money to lower interest rates created, you know, the effect of, uh, I guess, the common metaphor is if someone is uh, addicted to heroin, where you get that high yet once you try and withdraw, it becomes very difficult to do so. And certainly that's the case with where the Fed is at today. I personally feel that we've long been past the point of no return on this financial system. And my best guess at this point, gee, you'd have to think some of these banks and central bankers are able to see that. Uh, is really not rocket science, I wouldn't say. Um, my best guess is that there's a lot of the, well, this uh, hopefully will blow up the next guy's watch after I get my bonus. So uh, a lot of interesting dynamics happening. But I mean, again, to me, the long term, if you accept what I just laid out and I don't know, perhaps maybe you see that a little bit differently. And maybe you do think that there is a way that the Fed can ever not only stop printing money or retract the money supply, um, I don't know, maybe you see that. I have not been able to see how that's possible. In fact, I'll go a step further. Not only don't I see how the Fed, uh, I don't see any way they could ever stop printing, let alone retract the money supply. I don't even see how it's possible that they could 
not continue to increase the rate and the speed at which they're printing as time goes by. Again, we had the stimulus bill earlier this year. Now Congress is discussing another stimulus bill. We have an election and gee, you'd think it's a pretty good chance that uh, one way or another you're getting more stimulus before the end of the year. Or actually, let me re- <laughs> let me be a little more careful careful with my words because you probably aren't getting stimulus. Uh, I'll I'd be willing to bet an ounce of silver that it's the banks that will be getting the stimulus, as it sure looked like was what happened on the first round. So, anyway, to me, the long-term outcome, I don't know how you avoid that, which makes it an interesting situation because getting back to our original question of what is the true risk, well, I'll, I'll give you a couple of them. A, there could be... I don't know. I could just be completely wrong. Um, And I did wonder that a couple times throughout the years as I would keep researching silver. And um, trying to find out what's going on. And if I was missing anything, I'd say essentially that book, The Big Silver Short, was an attempt to disprove my theory, see if there was something missing, interview other people, talk with other people. Um, and I say this in the sense that, you know, it's I, I, I always acknowledge I, I could be wrong, although one of the things I did to address that and certainly feel as comfortable as possible, as confident as possible before going out and really sharing what I had to say with others, one of the steps I took along that journey was speaking to all the different investors and fund managers, newsletter writers, analysts, economists that you've seen on the show. And when one after another came back with the same conclusion, I mean, really the only people I can find who are talking against gold and silver are the Wall Street crowd that's following the same Keynesian ideology that led to uh, everybody missing the housing bubble. And again, keep in mind that the people who did see the housing bubble in advance all were talking about gold and silver. So, um, you know, I mean, so there's some probability that maybe there's just something that I can't see and that none of these other folks you've seen on the show can see. Um, I tend to think at this point that that's not the case. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I could debate what J.P. Morgan's doing, how short the banks really are. Is there some offsetting position that's hedging that? I mean, I suppose there's some gray area there, but that still seems like rearranging the chair, the deck chairs on the Titanic, because at the end of the day, all right, maybe, uh, uh, you know, there's some something I'm not seeing there. But going back to the original factor of how the Fed can never stop printing. I would say outweighs that Uh, and which I guess really brings me to what I see as the main risk and let's call it a combination of two parts maybe it's the personal risk and the time risk and I say that uh, because they're really two sides of the same factor I say that coming from a standpoint where I traded something in equity options that was short-term by nature. And there were certainly a period of time in my life I thought that's what I'd be doing my entire life uh, to going to the perspective I have now where I don't come on and attempt to explain what silver is going to do tomorrow or next week or next month because to be honest as much as i wish i really knew i don't um so the combination of those two is that i don't know how long that will take when i was leaving wall street in 2012 if you had told me back then that the price of silver would still be in the 20s by the time we hit 2020 i'm not sure that i would have believed that would be possible Um, So in that part, I was wrong, you know, and and certainly that's why I 
say as much when I'm seeing things that indicate that, gee, it sure seems like it could be happening soon. Um, but again, I think that's something that has been uniformly shared throughout the precious metals community where often when you look at the things that are happening, you think, gee, how much longer could this be patched together? And, you know, things go on longer than you, than you think that they could. You saw that portrayed quite eloquently in the movie The Big Short. All those investors faced the different pressures that they did. Um, although I might point out is that the, situ- the similarities are so stunning where in the end they had to sit there and be confident in their trade. So that's the personal side. So, again, I guess it's going to be in your own trading decisions. You know, I'm honored if you take my my show or or the the words I have as an input input in making your decisions. Um, But, I mean, at the end of the day, that's why, to me, the, the whole thing is so personal because I'm willing to bet what I have and just put it in silver or silver stocks and let time play out on my side. I think that when I look at the way the world has become very short term and focus, very what's going to happen next week, next quarter, next next day, even in many cases. Um, and then when I go back and think about how if you look at fair market value as some sort of equilibrium and then if a lot of people are impatient in a situation where you're talking about balance then especially in the markets to me that would seem like well gee if a lot of people are just impatient to wait for what they know would be so in a longer time horizon and i say that in the sense of if you're getting 5149 on a coin flip and the coin is fair there's no shenanigans going on and you structure your bet so that you won't get blown out but you can play that game as much as possible over time um, those were the things that we were trained to look for in uh, my trading career where, you know, if you uh, are getting even money bets on uh, something where the odds are 60-40 in your favor, that's a nice way that if you structure the math, you guarantee that you become the casino, which is a nice situation to be in. And it's similar to at least how I see silver because... I don't know. Maybe somehow they find a big new silver deposit and boost output. or I mean, there are the things that can happen in the short term. Um, one of which, which I think is worth watching out for. We saw this back with the Hunt brothers when the uh, the margin requirements were raised. So essentially... Now, if you know how much somebody has in their account and you can raise margin to any level and you raise it to more than they have, yes, you can, you know, liquidate someone into selling. I think we've seen this happen at various times in the markets. Uh, I believe the margins were actually raised again uh, a couple of days ago, too. So, and to the degree that so much of what government does is financed by printed and borrowed money. Again, uh, when people say, is the government rigging the price of silver or the banks rigging it? My best guess uh, is kind of what I thought even about 10 years ago and has not changed much. Uh, My feel is that the banks probably don't really give a darn either way what the price is doing as long as they're making money. But when I look at the evidence that's out there and how, uh, well, J.P. Morgan spoofing fine aside, it sure seems to me like, and Bart Chilton confirmed as much, that some of these regulators have been going out of their way to ignore the elephant in the room. So, again, that's just a guess. I don't know that I could factually prove that or not, but in the end, yeah, I would say that uh, on some levels of the government, maybe not everyone is sitting there thinking about that, and Ben Bernanke claims to not understand gold. Although that would be a little shocking if true, especially because his predecessor, Paul Volcker, even in Volcker's own autobiography, talked, I believe it was page 61 of Keeping at It, 
about the need to suppress the gold price following the collapse of the London gold pool in the late 60s, all of which led to Nixon removing the U.S. from the gold standard. So, um, you know, if Bernanke really didn't understand gold, he should have. And whether he understands it or not, that is irrelevant to whether we can understand it or not. And, you know, you put the pieces together and... I don't know. I know there's other perspectives on that. But to me, all right, so I I assume going into it that the powers that be, shall we say, will do whatever they can to keep the status quo system as constituted. Or maybe there will be a point where it says, uh, okay, well, we're ready to switch to new thing or we've loaded up on enough gold and enough silver and we're ready ready to let it rip i know there have been those videos uh, a bunch of videos circulating recently about the imf and a reset um i don't claim to have any inside information i do know the theme of davos 2021 is the great reset and i don't know i mean it's not rocket science when you look at that debt clock soaring out of control Or if you look at the Fed balance sheet or any of the central bank balance sheets soaring out of control, you can see there's an imbalance. I mean, now they can do the Ben Bernanke deer in the headlights routine and pretend that it's not there. Uh, I find that hard to imagine that that's really what these high level bankers and the folks who make such decisions really think. I mean, it's. (laughs) <laughs> you'd, you'd think there's someone in there somewhere who can see the debt loads and uh, money burdens soaring and isn't just completely oblivious to it. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if there is some sort of reset under process right now. I know Lynette Zhang, who was on the show last week, she thinks that. And again, some of those things we will only be able to know for sure in time but fortunately there are a lot of clues out there and again when I look at the different clues and the way these things are building to me based on that and again and really what this all goes back to is even less of a a particular opinion about silver but more so really uh, I mean yes it's silver but What I feel even more confident about is that the U.S. is never going to repay their debt or that none of these governments are going to ever repay their debt and that none of these central banks are ever going to unwind their balance sheets because they can't. The thing is insolvent, whether the thing means the U.S., the central banks, the whole economic system. I get it. That's hard for some people to accept. I mean, it's taken me 11 years to really accept and grasp it and there's some days where i still wonder gee is this really finally unfolding now is this really happening what so many people have talked about for years and decades and um you know on one hand it's hard to imagine yet on the other hand when it's this late in the game there's no talks about cuts there's an election coming up in a few weeks and I'm pretty sure that no one is even discussing cuts or deficit. It's just, hey, Corona's here. We have to print more or else. And again, keep in mind, that's the same. Yeah, I mean, you can say, well, hey, well, this is really a serious situation. We need to do whatever one might feel we need to do. But the only problem is that that's always the answer. And anyway... So to me, you know, at one day it is going to end. When that day is, I don't know. But that's really the biggest risk. And I guess I'll close with this where, I don't know, I hear people say sometimes, how long can this go on? When will it end? And I understand I'm talking to a lot of people, different age groups here. But I would say, what? let's say that the worst case scenario is that, A, either uh, 
the Fed actually unwinds the balance sheet. The U.S. pays off the debt, which I'm willing to bet the farm against that happening. Um, so, I mean, aside from that, I don't know. Let's say that you bought a lot of gold and silver or mining shares. And it was your kids that ended up living really well. And maybe it didn't happen in your lifetime. Again, to be clear, I don't think that's going to be the case unless you're, you know, like like 102 right now. I still personally believe that we're going to see some fireworks sooner than later. And just just keep in mind, at least on the gold side, you know, we're not talking about one day anymore. We've already seen... And just, you know, and I would say just the, 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 not even the full first inning there, but I mean, it's already happened and silver. Okay. It's not at $50 yet, but gee, when you think about how it just sat there for years and then jumped up so quickly in a matter of a couple of weeks. Um, and then when you think about what's happening again, if you know, the press, the fed conferences were about, all right, well, it's time to start tightening, or next month or next year we're going to start tightening. It's just so far removed from that. So anyway, I guess to in summation, what is the biggest risk to owning silver? A is really just being able to be patient, being able to invest for the long term. Again, I know there's some people maybe need income next year or next month, and if that's the case, uh, silver is not – the tool for for generating an income stream i don't know maybe you get like a royalty or something like that but i mean in terms of waiting on the silver price uh i expect wild things will happen before during and after it finally rises um and we'll see how long that takes hopefully the wait is almost over it sure will be a lot of fun to talk about how silver is higher rather than how one day it will be higher and uh again at least we're a little bit higher than a uh, couple of months back but anyway to me factoring that in and then having the discipline to stay with that if it's something that you really have conviction in that is really the biggest downside to owning silver um perhaps you have others and you can leave your comments below but in my opinion and after studying this and talking to all the folks that i have that's really your biggest risk uh you know i don't know maybe they pay down the debt but outside of that i think just being able to be patient so as always structure your trades in a way that serves you rather than works against you and hopefully this was helpful and giving you a few things to think about and maybe help you sleep a little bit easier at night And with that said, going to wrap up for today. But if you would like to know what has been happening on the physical level of the market, aside from all of the paper shenanigans and all that stuff, well, last week's physical silver and gold update with Andy Sheckman of Miles Franklin is coming your way now.